Welcome to this video about admissions tests. Admissions tests are a key part of the application process for the University of Oxford. I'm Lizzie, I was a student at St Edmund Hall, which is part of the University of Oxford. I graduated from a geography degree in 2019. I'm now working as one of the access and outreach officers at St Edmund Hall. The majority of courses at Oxford require you to sit an admissions test or tests as part of the application process. These tests are generally subject specific and here we'll give you a list of the subjects where a test is required for 2021 entry. Biomedical Sciences, Classics and Joint Schools, Computer Science and Joint Schools, Economics and Management, Engineering, English and Joint Schools, Fine Art in the form of a practical during interviews, History and Joint Schools, Human Sciences, Law, Material Science, Maths and Joint Schools, Medicine, Modern Languages and Joint Schools, Music in the form of a performance at interview, Oriental Studies and Joint Schools, Philosophy and Theology, Politics, Philosophy and Economics, PPE, Physics, Psychology and Philosophy, Psychology and Linguistics. This list can change from year to year and it's crucial that you check the page for your course of choice to be sure whether you need to take a test or the two tests for some of the joint schools courses such as history and modern languages. You'll be able to find an up-to-date list of admissions tests on our website at ox.ac.uk forward slash tests. So why do we use admissions tests? Well, firstly, they make a really good standardised measure. At Oxford, we get applicants from all over the world to our courses. These applicants have been in different school systems, studied different topics and subjects. As a result, it can be quite difficult to compare them academically. But if you have that admissions test, which everyone does in just the same way, then you have a more comparable score. Admissions tests also give us another dimension to your academic ability and potential that isn't necessarily captured in that conventional schooling system. We can look for different skills and ways of thinking that will be important on our courses. Thirdly, admissions tests help us to distinguish between a really talented pool of applicants. The tests are carefully designed to be quite different to any exams you'll have sat before, so they can show us different skills and ways of thinking that you might have. Fourthly and finally, performance on admissions tests is often used to help us shortlist applicants for interview. We don't necessarily have the resources to interview everyone who applies, and so performance on an admissions test can help us narrow it down a little bit. It's vital to remember that registration is essential. You must have yourself registered for any admissions tests that are required of you as part of your application by the 15th of October. That's the same deadline as we have for your overall UCAS application. You can usually take the test at school and the best way to confirm that you have been registered to do that is to get your candidate number from a teacher or the exams officer in your school. In the unlikely event that your school isn't registered as a test centre, they can get registered for free by the 30th of September. Should that deadline have passed and the school still isn't registered, then you can go to a national testing centre. We'll have details of those in the video description. The exception to this is the LNAT, that's the admissions test required by lots of UK universities to take a law course. Those are always taken in national testing centres, the same place that you'd go for your driving theory test. Preparation is the key to getting the best possible score on any admissions test or test that you are required to sit. They're not like your typical exams that you'll be used to from school, so getting familiar and understanding what's required of you is really, really helpful. To give you an example of that, we'll have a quick look at the LAT. That's a test for applicants to courses with languages they haven't studied before. As a part of the test, they'll be presented with a few sentences in a completely made-up language. And based on some basic information they're given about that language and its structure, they'll be asked to translate those passages into English. Now, if you're not applying for languages, that might sound extra daunting, but don't worry about it too much. The key here is to practice in advance, and that goes for any subject. You can check the video description for links to lots of different past papers and mark schemes so that whatever your test subject is, you can get in that practice that you need. Time management is a really important skill across pretty much all of our admissions tests. To demonstrate this, we'll take a closer look at the TSA, or the Thinking Skills Assessment, which is used for a couple of subjects including Economics and Management and PPE. The test requires you to answer 50 questions in just 90 minutes. That gives you about a minute and 48 seconds per question. 
And that's pretty rapid and again quite different from most of these school exams that you'll be used to. So having a really good practice with that and understanding how you can get yourself to get the best possible answers to as many questions as possible is really helpful. The HAT, or the History Aptitude Test, also requires good time management skills. In this test of reading comprehension and source interpretation, you are asked to take about 20 minutes to read the source and about 40 minutes to write your answer, which again is quite a different proportion of time to what you would allocate in normal exams. So having a practice of that and understanding the depth that they want you to read in and the different sorts of points that they'd like you to bring out will help you do well on that test. Three of the admissions tests we use here at Oxford have a content specification that's similar to a syllabus with a list of different things that could come up on the test. So if you know that you need to sit the BMAT, the MAT or the PAT, then you should have a look out for that content specification. Some of the material on there will be beyond what you have already done at school. For that reason, it might be helpful to take some time to sit down with the teacher and go through the specification to make sure that you understand everything on there. When you do go and practice your subject submissions test, don't be disheartened if you get a mark that's a bit lower than what you were expecting. Remember that these tests are carefully designed to be difficult. They're supposed to stretch and challenge that talented applicant pool that we mentioned before. Our final tip for admissions tests after practice, practice, practice is to read the paper instructions. It might sound a bit basic and I'm sure people have been telling you to do that since primary school, but it really can be helpful. Those instructions might contain advice about how to answer the paper or even specific instructions about which sections to do and how long to take on them. Whilst admissions tests are one of the key ways that we assess academic suitability for our courses, it's important to remember they are looked at alongside the rest of your application. So we will read that personal statement in your teacher's reference, we'll look at any submitted work that you've given to us, and we'll look at your predicted and obtained grades as well. All of that will be considered together to decide who to shortlist for interview and who to offer places to at the end. To give yourself the best chance of a successful score in your admissions test, remember to practice and think about your time management skills when you do so. I hope you found this video about Oxford admissions tests helpful. Remember to check out those links that we mentioned in the video description for more information and to get to those practice papers that you'll need to do. This video was made by St Edmund Hall, one of the colleges here at the University of Oxford. If you'd like to find out more about us, you can check out our website at seh dot ac forward slash apply.